So I made a big mistake. What is that mistake? I refer as uh, frames of animation as 60 FPS and 24 FPS, stuff like that. In animation, you do not do that. You do it on ones and twos and threes, but it translates to 24 or 60 or, you know, all that. So, all the fight scenes is on, um, animated on ones and twos, and the normal scenes are animated on twos and threes. That means every uh, three frames, it changes. Every two frames, it also changes. And it's the same with uh, ones and twos. Every one and two frame, it changes. I am a starting to get into animation i am still an artist by sketches and rough ske rough sketches and sketches do not kill me i do not study animation i am not an animator i want to be but that's for different reasons that's for storyboarding instead of actual animating because i don't like animating i tried it in krita and I just don't like it. <laughs> so, before all the animation people find this video and kill me, I'm putting this uh, out in the fucking uh, beginning. What I'm talking about when I'm talking about the fight scenes being in a slower frame is, instead of uh, having higher frame rate according to uh, gamers, it's actually a different type of animation. I call it frame rate. It's actually animating on different frames. Again, this is how I kind of read it as. Do not kill me, animators, if I completely mess that up. I am still a learner of animation and other stuff. Don't kill me. I, pro I promise you, I'm trying to learn as best as I can. So, let's get into the video. <laughs> Season 1, Episode 5, The Convention. This episode starts with Luce reading the Good Witch Exor books to King. Luce shows King a flip art of the fight she was reading to him. King says he was once the king of art, and Luce says, are you just making this stuff up now? King says, it doesn't matter. Then Luce says, do you want me to keep on reading the book? And Ida speaks up and says, the, its flowery language is insult is insulting the witches and driving away customers. But Luz points out the fact that there's no one around, not even the other booths. Then Ida says something bad is going on today. Then Willow and Gus shows up and tells Luz something amazing is happening today. Willow tells Luz that the annual convention where all the students and witches go to get, get to see all the covens before they're placed in one. And there, there will be a mystery guest this year. Luce asks, is, ask Ida if they can go, but Ida says, nope. We find out that Ida never joined a coven for a reason. When you get into a coven, your all your other magic is locked away from you. Then Ida says, we haven't been part of one since we were girls. And Luce gets excited about Ida's mysterious past. And they all go, but Ida still says no. Then Luce set, tells King to start reading the book, and Ida tries to leave through the portal door. But Luce yeets King into the door before it closes. But as soon as it does, Ida comes right back, begging, uh, begging to make it stop. So everyone goes to the convention. Ida starts to put a corral on, and Luce asks if she needs it. Ida asks Luce that her one. Ask her if her wanted post poster are just for petty thief. Yes, and also disobeying the law if she didn't join a coven. If she is seen, she can go to jail. I don't like this because what we see, Ida doesn't have any problem walking around and selling stuff to people. So it feels weir weird when she tries to hide her face. I guess it's done from just storytelling perspective and not from... We see this every single day, so I'm guessing it's just because, you know, we don't have time for that. We don't have time for that. 
Then Willow tells her maybe going to the convention will make her want to join a covenant. Then Ida flips uh, Willow's cowl over her head. Poor Willow. They go in and Gus explains there are nine main covens, but there are smaller ones. Willow explains some covens like the art, bakery, cats, tiny cat coven, and the tiniest cat coven. Why are there three cat covens? Why are there no dog covens? <laughs> Hi, Editor Chop here. Uh, this clip is wrong because here's this clip to prove there is a dog coven. Big dog coven? Then Ida gets upset and Willow says also the grumpiest coven and Ida gets upset with this and the kid runs off. The kids runs off. Then some someone spots her and she yeets a bag of hex mix at him and pulls his cowl over his head and takes back the bag and runs off. Lou sees a coven and asks Willow, who's that? Willow explained that's the building coven. They use paraglyphs to give them a power boost and we see the dude running the stand giving the monster itself a paraglyph and she destroys the booth. Then Lou gets shown a mirror image of herself and Gus tells us that he's part of the Illusions Club coven. Luce asks Ida why she hasn't joined one, so Ida shows Luce that when you you join a coven, all your other magic is locked away to you. And because she never joined a coven, she can use all the magic. As they leave, King is stopped and given a pin by someone, and he is happy by getting an offering. Luce and the other come across the Imperts Coven. Luce wants Ida to join them inside, but Ida doesn't want to. Luce tells Ida even if the coven isn't bad, but she wants to make her own mind up. But Ida hears the man from earlier that comes looking for her with a guard, so Ida has to run in. They sit down, and Principal Bump goes up on stage, and he says, Students, ask me what is the Hyatt's height, height, magical achievement. And then some student says this, and makes his head bigger, and crushes another student, and Bump says this. Wow. I failed you as a principal. And then Bump says the Emperor Coven has all forms of magic and only the best of the best of the best can join and that can be one of you can join. He points to Empty Bly who is smiling like a fangirl at a stray kids concert. And Lou sees this. Then Bump invites the mystery guest and the leader of the Emperor's Coven, Lilith. And Ida looks surprised to see her and Luz is very curious about Ida's mysterious pass. Then Lilith says, I also came from a humble beginning and she worked hard to get to the highest rank in the Emperor's Coven when uh, they leave and Luce bumps into Empty who starts to get mad and then stops after seeing it's Luce and Luce says sorry for last week and the whole abomination thing but Empty gets mad at her for getting on getting her in trouble with Bum and she says and I never get in trouble and Lou says she was okay with him cutting her open and then Empty says you can't be here this is for witches only and Lou says she's learning magic from a powerful witch and a demon and King walks up to Lou and Empty with all his stu uh, stuff and that he got from the convention and trips and drops a cupcake he was carrying on the uh onto the ground and then empty steps on it and Luce asks why she being is being so mean and empty says it's because she's giving witches a bad name then Lou says it's one thing to say that I can't do be a witch but it's another thing to bully my friends and challenges empty to a witch's duel and that they make terms. If Luce wins, Empty has to apologize for squ squishing King's cupcake and admit that humans can be witches too. But if Empty wins, Luce has to tell everyone that she isn't a witch and she can't learn magic forever.
When Luce agrees to this and runs off to get Ida, we cut to Ida trying to leave, but Lilith says sister to Ida, and Lilith starts making fun of Ida's clothes, but Ida says to the kids that are around Lilith that when Ida and Lilith were kids, when they saw the Im Emperor's Coven, she peed a little. I can't believe. <laughs> oh, I forgot about that. Uh... And Lilith is not happy with that, and sends the kids off, and Lilith says that Ida should not be here, and that she's a wanted criminal, then Lilith says that Ida wants to join, unless uh, Ida wants to join the uh, Emperor's Coven, but Ida doesn't want to. Lilith says Ida thinks that she is uh, so smart for not joining a coven, and she's bragging about training the next generation of powerful witches. And Ida says, I'm also training a human. She can probably wipe the floor with any of her students. Then Luz pops up and explains her problem, and Lilith says Ida's student has met Lilith's strongest prodigy, which is AMD. Lilith takes away the wanted posters and says, want to see how good Ida is as a teacher. So they leave to train. Then we cut to a scene where Ida was, um, is asking Luce what if a fireball was coming at, a blast of fire was coming at her, and what would she do? And Luce falls over. This was in the ad I watched for the show, and without context, it wasn't funny to me at the time. And I never saw any of their ones besides this one. Dizzy needs to really work on ads like tell me how the show is with interview with dana other parts of the team talking about the show because seeing this does not want me look into it it just wants me to skip the ad every time i see it without context it isn't funny but with the context that loose cannot do magic it is hilarious but ida hasn't taught loose anything and ida hopped that Hope that she didn't make a oath, but she did, and we see that Empty is making the small abominations, and it yeets its head at some random dude, then the monster with the paraglyph picks up the dude and yeets him. Jesus Christ, we need someone help. Someone, uh, so Lilith grabs some people for the witch's duel and says, this is the type of witch's which is we are looking for, and calls out MT's name, and everyone goes wild. But Lilla says, and some human. Everyone looks confused, and some dude says, that's not Amity. And Luce asks Ida what to do. Ida tells Luce that to make up, uh, to make Amity walk onto one of those mounds, Luce does not like the idea of cheating, and the fight starts, and Amity summons up giant abomination and Luce runs to the corner where the abomination gets close and he steps on a mound that shoots up fire at it. We cut to King with like five hats and a lot other stuff uh, to him, uh, stuck to him and we see and uh, he asks what's, what did he miss and Willow and Gus tells him that Luce is, is in a witching duel and she could win, and we could cut to the abomination and empty to empty and the abomination that gets launched up. And empty says she didn't even see her use her hands, and what is she getting at? And Luce responds, not dying, and empty gets pissed off. And we cut back to King, who is getting mad at a person for cheering for empty, but King. Before King could do anything, he slips on his scarf and falls into uh, the arena, landing on some spike, a spike mound. Before Empty does, and Sp Lilith comes over, and they find out Luce and Ida were cheating. Luce tells everyone it wasn't her idea of cheating, and that she tried to stop it, but Empty cuts her off and says, who can believe anything that Luce says? But Ida knows this a paraglyph on the back of Empty's neck and shows it to everyone, so she also cheated. That's why earlier parts of the show we saw Empty using small abomination and then she used a giant one. And everyone is surprised and Lilith says she, she only did it because she knew uh, Ida was going to cheat. 
and empty runs off crying before leaving. Luce uh, helps Kings and then runs off to find empty. Lilith and Ida starts arguing, and Lilith gets mad and attacks Ida, and Ida says the real witch's duel will be done. We cut to outside where, uh, to Luce looking for MD, and she finds MD crying in the dark corner of a room. And Luce wants to help her, but MD keeps on trying to push her away, and Luce doesn't it didn't mean to embarrass her, but MD says that's all she ever does. First at school, and then... Uh, at the convention near her future, and Luce tries to say something, but Empty by, uh, cuts her off by saying, You may uh, me look like a fool in front of the Emperor's come in my future. You, uh, you think it's so easy to become a witch. I have been working my whole life to get to the top. You lost. You cheated. Say something. You're not a witch. And Luce actually does it. And, and Luce actually does do it. And Empty. Uh, mad slash sad face goes to a surprise expression and Luce shows that MT that she is really trying hard to become a witch and we cut back to the witch's duel. All I'm going to say about this is the animation is really smooth and Ida tells Lilith that her uh, curse is getting worse and Lilith is actually surprised that Ida came to see her one last time and, and Lilith looks like she's going to say something important, and then Ida just yeets food at her and escapes. We cut back to MT telling Luce that's nothing a child could do a light spell, but she never saw a cast like how Luce cast it. And Luce explains that she can't do magic like other people, so she has to improvise. Then MT unbounds the oath, and Luce asks if she could do, still do magic. MT explains that human doesn't have magic, but it, but she says she doubts that it will stop her from trying. And I have to talk about from uh, uh, about this from episode three. I was a teenager. I was a teenager abomination. We learned that MT hates cheaters and loves hard workers. And throughout the episode, Amity sees Luce as a person who embarrasses her and is not a hard worker. And when she finds out that she also cheated, she runs off crying. When Luce says, I'm not a witch, Amity learns that Luce, even though that they, both of them, they, they cheated, both of them cheated, she still says she isn't a witch, which surprised her, probably because she, um, uh, that she thought Luce was going to say, I don't have to because you also cheated, but Luce didn't. And when she shows Empty and Lu uh, shows Empty and tells Empty that she's that needs to do magic other way, then Empty does, uh, then which Empty does, um, Luce. It, it shows Luce is a hard worker to Empty, and Empty sees this and unbounds the oath. If you're still not convinced that she isn't just a bully, she is a bully character, then think to this. Think about this. Everything was fine before Luce came along. If Luce didn't come along, MT would not have gotten in trouble with Mom, and she wouldn't have been a cheater in this episode. Even though MT is uh, mean to the main character, because of all she could have uh, let the oath stay bound, but she didn't. A shitty bull bully character wouldn't do that. Empty respects Luce's hard work, even though she doesn't like cheaters or the uh, getting in trouble from uh, Luce. Empty still sees the hard work and determination that Luce puts out, uh, put towards her magic skills. Okay, let's get back into this episode. Tina and Ida regroups uh, before they leave. Luce asks Ida if she will ever become a real witch, and Ida asks her, what does that mean? Because if that means being like the people in the convention, they are all we compared to Ida. She tells Luce, you're going to have be your own witch. Then after that, they leave. We cut to Lilith going to a room, and a phone-like thing pops open, and we see a person tell Lilith that the... Um, that she let the owl lady get the best of her temper and she uh says remember what bellos has promised you if you captured the owl lady that was episode five this episode was a fun episode story driven most of the 
uh, episodes that are story driven are better than the random adventure episodes. Uh, later in season two, you'll see that the random adventure episodes are just gone, and I'll get into that when I talk about season two. Uh, to me, the adventure ones are not bad. This, uh, but the story ones are better to me because I just like story shows better than adventuring random adventures. This episode had uh, funny jokes, most of them landing great. Uh, the fight scenes are rare, but amazing animators did a great job on the fight scenes. And the story with Lilith and Edith is okay. Lilith, Lilith is Edith's sister, I don't think I've mentioned that. And as many times I say this, Empty is great in, this, uh, great in this episode. We learn more about her character, about how she isn't just an ankle-deep bully character, but she has depth to the, uh, her. We learned that she is a hard worker from everything, and she doesn't like cheater. And we see, uh, and when we see uh, the person that embarrasses her in front of the most powerful coven, she lets her learn magic and do magic again. We also learned that Luce feels really bad when she does cheat, and uh, sees um, and feels sad when Empty tells her. That she does work her uh, work as hard as uh, Empty does, so Luz has to show uh, her she has to work hard. And when Empty sees it, she understands that Luz has to work hard to do magic. Ten out of ten. This is a great episode. The only reason uh, episode one and episode three doesn't get this high of a score it's because some but now i think it was more of the character wasn't develop up develop enough that's really it the character wasn't develop enough but of course we're gonna get more character development throughout the show what about the convention where loose gus uh ida king willow goes to like a convention hall full of the covens I will say that was probably one of my favorite episodes, like the convention coven stuff, because that's just a. I'm I'm a huge geek for like any like series that drops like a lot of like lore or like world building shit. That was just chopped a little bit with like the coven system, the emperor's coven, and a whole bunch of other stuff. Oh yeah. Also, we don't learn about Bellos until like later down the compl like we hear snippets about him, but not like see him, hear him, or any of that until the last two episodes. And we hear about the Emperor's Coven, how they're the best, and all this. And Lilith is the head of it. Yep. And every time we see Lilith after this episode, she just gets beaten. <laughs> I, I honestly, at the, mm, it kind of reminds me of the thing in anime that we're like, you, you, I know the code of that. You watched a fair bit of anime, so you may have noticed this too. But uh, it's what I like to call the Vegeta effect. And for those of you guys that aren't anime like nerds, Vegeta is a character in Dragon Ball Z that whenever a strong guy appears, he just gets the shit kicked out of him. And I like to think that Lilith is under the effects of the Vegeta effect, where, like, <laughs> it's a very, it's a character that, like, you know, we just know uh, is strong, because many people have said that she's strong and talented. But in reality, they are just used to be beaten up by other characters to show off how strong or, like, how powerful they are. Yeah. Or just, like, in general. Yeah. I think the reason, I think... Because, like, every time Lilith is beaded, it's mostly from Ida. And I say I say Ida is uh, better because, like, we see this in Season 2. Ida had better everything. She was faster, smarter than Lilith. And they both want to join the Emperor's Coven. Yeah, I will say, like, Ida is probably, like, the best witch in the series. Uh, no diff. Other than, like, Bellos. I think... I think Ida... Can be the best witch. Because she's a wild witch. She has access to any type of magic. 
The problem that, that is, is true, but like Bellos is just I think Bellos is just stronger. No, 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 like I'm not talking about versus uh, but the problem with Ida is she he before she loses her power, spoilers, woo, uh, he only uses really fire speed and uh shield what else? Fire speed shield. Uh, like energy blast, I believe. Yeah. And potions, and that's it. She doesn't even tap into I think a bomb. He uses hexes too. Huh? If she has hexes. I think she uses. No, she did use abominations because of her like school pranks. Oh, that's right. But she doesn't even do that in like battle or anything. When you're like a all powerful witch that has access to any type of magic, take advantage of that. Like these guards, oh, well, huh? Well, you see, Dakota, this is another thing. Yeah, I know it's I would... tropes. Well, no, like it's a thing that I've noticed that when characters can copy or use multiple styles, they only ever default to the same moves. It reminds me of Kakashi Naruto because he's called the Copy Ninja. You know, user of a thousand jutsus, but he yeah. only ever uses, like, seven. <laughs> that is true. And this it is why... Yeah, this is why I like One Punch Man. He's overpowered, and that's why it's so good. Honestly, it's not even, like... I honestly don't even like One Punch Man for the fights. I love it because of, like, just the character interactions, and I think that's yeah. just the goal of it anyway. That, that's also another reason. But I'm saying, just in fight scene, that's really good. Because it's saying, this guy is best at punching shit. And that's what he does. I don't know, but back to the topic of hand. Yeah, I did kind of notice that. Well, I don't know. I guess, like... I guess... She can't really use a lot of different, like, uh, magic stuff, probably because of, like, a bunch of restrictions on the magic, maybe. I'm not really sure. I think it's more of because she was a potion main in school, and that's why she really never gone out of it, in air quotes. No, I, I think she actually can use a lot more spells that she has credit for, but she never really has to use, like, the arsenal. Yeah, this is true. I I don't know. Maybe like, maybe we only, we only ever see her use her arsenal when she fights Lilla. But against yep. everyone else, they're just so easy and less powerful than Ida. All she really needs is a few tricks to like to really beat, like to really beat them, you know? Yeah, this is true. Uh what about Amity in this episode? What do you think about her? Oh wait, what episode are we on again? I forgot. Amity uh challenges loose to a witch fight because she steps on King's cupcake and um oh, you know what you know what like a little bit more redeemable you know like yeah I um, think of her I didn't think of her as a bitch this time. So I thought she was a bitch at the start of the episode because of that. When uh when it's a tie because Ida cheats for loose um Luce. Actually, no. Luce won because Amity like uh, had a fucking power clip on her. That that is true, but also Luce also cheated. Yeah, that's why I'm saying it's a tie. It's a draw. Stand down. Um, but if you don't know the episode, Lilith, uh, prodigy is Amity. Amity is the most powerful witch, uh, under, uh, Lilith, and Lilith, uh told tells Ida, hey, let's have our pupils fight it out in a ring. Meanwhile, Luce only knows the light glyph, nothing else, and fights yeah. Amity in this ring at the school this, uh, competition. And then Amity, uh, or uh, Luce uh, gets find out uh, by Lilith, or Amity points out uh, that there were spikes under this heel, where uh, when King falls into the ring, and um, when Empty turns to leave, Ida sees a paraglyph on the back of her neck, and Yeet rips it off, 
and Lilith is like, hey, that's no fair, That w that's because I put it there, blah, blah, blah. And then Ida just says, like, I win, blah, 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 and just starts dancing, by the way. I think that's hilarious. We just started fighting, too. Uh, we'll get to that. And uh, MT and Luce leaves the arena, or MT runs off crying, Luce follows her, and Luce sits down with MT and talks about how uh, MT or how she's not a real witch, and MT was right, and uh, then shows MT how she does magic, and says, I'm trying my best to become a witch, and MT does the spell where their deal is off, and stuff like that. Then, we cut back to Arena, where uh, Lilith and MT, or not MT, Lilith and MT, <laughs> that would have been a fight. Uh, yes, Lilith versus MT, <laughs> who would win? Uh, Lilith versus Ida starts going down, and I can just say, this is hella amazing. 60 FPS on the fight scenes, and they dip between 60 FPS to 24 FPS. That's just amazing. I'm an am uh, animation nerd for this stuff. And you can really see, like, because, like, a lot of Dragon Ball Z fights are at 24 frames per second. That's just a artist's choice. And I, I, I will say, I will say, I'm going to interject here. Okay. I hate early Dragon Ball fights because if you don't notice, they loop the same attacks over and over. Yeah, that is I true. That is true. I don't like when they loop attacks. That's stupid. But I'm saying just like how it goes from, I think dra normal Dragon Ball Z runs at 30 FPS, it drops down to 24 frames per second in fights just yeah. because that's just their art style. And yeah. By the way, I watch videos on this. This is why I know so much about stuff like this. And it just looks so good when... Uh, I think it's where Ida launches hoodies out of the uh, area. Where it's like, she's running at 60 FPS and the uh, hoodie heads are running at 24. It just looks so nice to me. I do not know why. It just looks so good. It always, the animation always looks so nice. It's always done top notch. Yeah. I have no complaints there. The animation is top ball. I'm just saying, like, in the fight scene, especially in the fight scene, they look top notch. Oh, yeah. I could definitely tell where they put most of their budget into. Yeah, the last fight of the se uh, season and the these fights. Uh, because, like, other. Um, fight scenes are just normal animation like uh the good example is uh the golden guard versus ida in the first episode of season two which is yeah, just yeah. that just normal animation and i like that but this different art style or this different animation style switching from this really nice 60 fps to this uh 60 fps 24 slash because it, it also this kind of different lighting style also that's really good too i like that <laughs> do you got anything more to say on that no 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 i think you said everything i wanted to say okay uh 